Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Um, so, my name is uh, um, Hadi. I am from the Department of um, Chemistry, Faculty of Science, and I'm currently attached to EDEC under the uh, portfolio of e-learning. Um, so, what we're going to do today is basically looking at um, spectrum in a bit more detail. So, um, Late of last year, we've organized um, a spectrum basic session um, where we introduced a little bit of the general contents about spectrum, how to do this and that. So for today's session, we're going to look at a bit more advanced, um, a little bit, uh, but at the same time, I'm going to uh, look back at what we have covered so far, the basics um, of a spectrum. Okay, and um, by all means, if you have any questions, um, Ask me anytime. Okay, so EDEC stands for Academic Development and Enhancement Center for those who are new to UM um, and perhaps this is your first semester, so welcome. So we are the center that is responsible in teaching and learning um, pertaining to academics. So um, looking at new contents, uh, what university should go, um, move forward to, and all the training associated to um, those particular contents. Okay, so we're going to look at Spectrum Intermediate today. Um, and um, for those who have used Spectrum previously or have used Moodle uh, previously, um, in UM we have four different, um, uh, how do I say this, um, not to say websites, uh, but learning uh, LMS, learning management system, that's the correct word. Okay, so we have four different learning management system uh, which are called Spectrum. Okay, so this is uh, the most common um, platform that we use for our daily teaching and learning, especially for undergraduates. We have Atrium uh, for those who have enrolled or have went through um, Emerald session, then you will have um, gone through Atrium or you have registered for Atrium. For those who have not, don't worry, we're going to look at that one as well. Um, the university also have a platform for open course learning. Uh, this is um, as part of um, open education resources that was um, enacted by um, the United Nations under UNESCO. So Malaysia is, is part of the SINES and therefore um, UM as part of uh, the higher education uh, providers, we also provide um, a a database, uh, so to say, of uh, information for anyone to actually join in, um, register and learn on what we have shared. Okay, so this is not, um, it's similar to Spectrum and Atrium, but um, the content itself is um, not that recent. Okay, so um, there's, there's a few reasons for that, but this is what uh, a common practice for uh, by other universities uh, around the world. And finally, we will have um, ODL SIM. So ODL is online distance learning. So this is, again, um, the trajectory of the university to do an open distance learning. And SIM uh, stands for self-instructional material, where in contrast to traditional teaching and learning, where the teacher is saying and then the students are listening. So SIM is where we develop contents uh, for that particular course or program, and the students will um, do it on their own. Okay, so there's no uh, need to have a face to face um, direct learning as what we are doing now. Okay, so these are all for Moodle based platforms, our learning management system in UM. Um, and what I'm going to cover today is just on Spectrum, but nonetheless, it will be similar to all the other three Atrium, OpenCourseWare, and ODL SIM. So, why do I introduce these other three? Um, well, in the future, you might um, need to be involved in any of these three um, other platforms. So I'm um, just telling you guys now, so at least you know and uh, be aware of what we have. Okay, so uh, by all means, um, stop me anytime to ask questions. I do have um, um, another tablet on my left, so that's why if you look at me, um, sometimes I will look on the left. Okay, so I have another tablet over here to look at the chats and whoever is here. So if you do have any questions, um, you can either unmute, stop me, ask your questions, or you can just put it in the chat. Then I will go and um, look at it and hopefully be able to answer your question, your questions. 
Okay, so what we're going to cover today is um, basically looking at these um, seven mm, more or less uh, things. So we're going to look at general, uh, a bit of general information, uh, looking at a little bit on the basics. Um, of course, we're going to look at some of the basics um, under others as well. Um, but we're going to look at a bit more detail on how do you prepare attendance, especially because today is the first day of the semester. So if you have not set up your attendance um, by any other means, then perhaps you can use uh, Spectrum as your get-go tool. Okay, and then we are going to cover blocks and HTML a little bit. So it's it, even though it's HTML here, it doesn't mean that you need to do any coding. So it's just one of the blocks that, um, at least in my case, I have uh, am a frequent user. So I'm just going to share with you guys how do I set it up and uh, why do I set it up in the first place? And because this is a more an intimidate, I'm going to cover also on backup and restore. Um, so I received a few questions about this uh, previously as well. So I'm just going to cover it a little bit. You might use it, you might not use it at all, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to recover it. I'm going to cover um, about it anyway, since this is an intimidate session. And I'm going to look at H5P very, very tiny bit, very short while, because uh, this is what um, EDEC have been trying to promote uh, multiple times. Um, and I'm going to look at a bit on others as well. OK, so on a general matter, why Spectrum? So um, if you are accustomed to traditional learning where, you know, you might have prepared your own lecture notes uh, or perhaps um, you, you know, printed all the lecture notes and give it to the students. And during the lecture, you just, you know, talk straight away like what, what I'm doing now. So I'm just going to give up a lecture style so that we can cover like a lot of materials and at the same time finish as, as quick as possible. OK, and um, why Spectrum is basically because um, as we move forward using technology in our um, education, um, there needs to be a change and instead of uh, teacher centered where the teachers it's all about the teacher. The teacher says this and that and the students just, you know, um, eat up all the information is given. So the education platform kind of like um, had a switch a little bit into student centered. So where student needs to also be or take part in the uh, learning process. So um, Spectrum was established um, to promote what we call as blended learning. Okay, so perhaps if you have looked at your Spectrum page, you can see there's one table on the right hand side where we can uh, look at it um, after this, where it says blended learning. Okay, whether it's a yes or no, whether it's um, uh, what's the terminology, I can't remember. Okay, but we're going to look at it uh, after this. And blended learning, if you were to translate it into Bahasa, for those who might have heard or might have not heard about this terminology, it is what we call as Pembelajaran Teradun Sokongan or PTS. Okay, so PTS is what we have been practicing for um, the past at least five years since I entered UM. Okay, but in the future, in the very near future, um, and, and Dr. Zahir uh, have also introduced this a little bit, is where we are moving towards uh, what we call as Pembelajaran Teradun Gantian or PTG, or in English is Blended Learning Substitute. So the difference between those two is when um, blended learning is where you normally, at least in our practice in UM, you normally prepare your lecture notes before the session. Okay, so the students can um, just look at the notes, print it, read it first, do whatever they want, um, do a background reading on, on the subject materials before they enter the lecture. Okay, and then the mode of um, education is always either face to face, online face to face, synchronous, or um, you do it face to face in the lecture hall. Okay, so this is the normal PTS, the normal blended learning. So what's the difference between blended learning and blended learning substitute is when the substitute words comes in where it is substituting the face to face lecture. So for example, uh, instead of having a live session like this, I'm going to cut a little bit on what I'm going to say today, put it into uh, a module in uh, Spectrum or Atrium, for example. And then for those who wants to um, attend this session, they need to go through the material first, 
looking at the lecture notes and whatnot, and then come to the session perhaps just for Q&A. Okay, so the learning process takes place online or, or what is as what we have done previously during COVID-19 is where you record your lecture, you give it to your students. Okay, so we are actually have already started uh, practicing blended learning substitute. However, as always, it will come with the proper documentation uh, to say that what you are doing now is actually following the PTG guideline or blended learning substitute guidelines. Okay, so uh, but again, that's not what we're gonna touch today. So uh, what I'm gonna the summary for this from from this um, first sentence why spectrum is when spectrum comes in where you prepare your lecture notes or record it or or you know you can just take up um, materials from outside like for example um, for those who have not known last week we had at puzzle session where at puzzle um, generously provide us an unlimited uh, usage for this semester. So if you are the type that um, use videos provided by outsiders, um, you you know either download it or use it in your lecture, perhaps you can look at that puzzle where you can actually take the video, cut it into the section that you want, and then provide it as a blended learning substitute or PTS modules. Okay, so um, it's, it's very detailed looking at PTG. So perhaps if you're interested, come to, to edX, um, we can have a chat about it. Okay, so this is where the spectrum comes in, where you put in all your materials back into the LMS learning management system. Okay, and um, this is just um, to let everybody know that um, previously spectrum and the ICS web are kind of like two separate entities where um, the information from um, ICS web is only being transferred to spectrum once. So um, if say, for example, you accidentally deleted student's name list. Okay, so it happens multiple times. I just had one request um, last week where he accidentally deleted the student's list. Um, so the previous system, if you accidentally deleted it, it's very troublesome uh, because you need to tell your e-learning coordinator or me or edX, um, and then we will need to tell PTM and then PTM will need to restore uh, your course. Okay, however, um, the PTM has switched to a new system whereby Spectrum and Maya um, are always in sync. Okay, so say for example, you accidentally, even after this, deleted your student name list um, inside Spectrum. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to call me. You don't need to, to call PTM. You do not need to submit a help desk. So um, every night uh, at about 12 something, um, there will be a uh, moment where Maya and Spectrum shares um, their information. So say, for example, if you accidentally deleted your course or your student uh, list in your Spectrum, um, at midnight, Spectrum will tell Maya, I don't, I no longer have the student list. And what Maya will do is just transfer the student list into Spectrum. So to the end of the day, your name list will be keep on updated. OK, so um, this is also beneficial because uh, as you probably have noticed uh, from previous semester where um, the university had multiple intakes. OK, so this is very useful because the intakes the registration and whatnot goes into, into Maya and then every midnight Maya will just transfer the information to um, Spectrum. OK, and finally, this is a bonus. Um, this is what we're going to try or at least QMAC I'm going to try um, for this semester. So for those who, you know, um, I notice multiple names from multiple PTJs. So please let your friends know that um, Spectrum will be used as the core for course file. OK, so meaning that um, by the end of a semester, of course, um, this semester will be kind of like a trial run where Previously, your, your faculty uh, might uh, practice that at the very end of the semester, once we have completed all the exams and um, BR forms and whatnot, we still need to uh, prepare all the other materials like uh, proof of your uh, teaching materials, your attendance, course assessments and whatnot, right? But um, uh, QMAC had uh, discussed with EDEC last time where they wanted to use Spectrum as um, the part of a component of a course file. 
So for example, if you use attendance feature in Spectrum, you no longer have to prepare your own attendance. Okay, so those are the things that um, QMAC is planning for this semester. I know we have uh, started using, um, what was it, IPAX system, right, for our BR 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay, so that is also part of QMAC's plan to substitute all our uh, printed hard copies into a digital copy. Okay, so this is just to let everybody know that if you are a avid user of Spectrum, then that's good. But if you are using a lot um, of Teams, then um, there will be a bit more work um, that you need to do at the end of the day where you still need to update your Spectrum. Okay. All right. So um, that's about it for general. Let's move on to reviewing the basics. Now, uh, for those who have um, gone through um, Emerald Teaching and Learning, so you might have um, seen this, especially if you um, had your Emerald for the past, I think, um, two years. Okay, you might have seen this, or I think uh, perhaps um, even uh, Dr. Farah have seen this. Okay, so this is during um, her time and um, uh, Dr. Amira. Okay, so these are all the basics. Um, looking at a little bit on module introduction, um, grouping, how do you group students? We're going to cover about that. I'm going to show you one case example because there's, uh, there's three ways by which you can uh, group students um, in Spectrum. Okay, so if, say, for example, your class is very huge, you have 100 or 200 students, and you normally um, do group work. So instead of manually um, grouping the students, um, you have other options as well. Okay, and, and one of the options is by which you can use um, set Spectrum to group, either automatically group your students or allow your students to enroll themselves in a group. Okay, I'm going to um, show you guys how to do it uh, after this. Okay, and um, Spectrum Essential, uh, cost management is, is one of the things that um, you can actually do um, in Spectrum as well, but we are not going to cover that um, today. Okay, so again, this is our all basic. Uh, file also is a basic thing. You can just either drag and drop or you can upload your files into Spectrum. Um, forum feature is also one of the features that is uh, automatically set up um, in your Spectrum page. Okay, and we're gonna touch a little bit on how do you prepare assignments because um, it might be beneficial for one or two of you guys. Um, and um, that's it now. Instead of covering all of these materials, what you can do is on the screen now is where um, you can scan this and uh, what it will do is it will transfer you into Atrium. If you have an Atrium account, Atrium is part of UM uh, LMS as well, so don't worry about you know your data privacy and whatnot. Okay, so you can register for Atrium and then um, this QR should link you directly to Spectrum Basics or they call it as Spectrum X, okay? Um, and if you enroll, so it is a self-enroll um, course, so you can just enroll on that particular course on Atrium and you can um, start on doing all these basics component if you would like to. Okay, if you have known about all of these, then it's fine, but this is just to showcase that uh, what we have and um, what is not covered uh, in this particular session. All right. So that's about it uh, for review the basics. And um, I've also shared the um, material for this session. So say, for example, if you had not had time to actually download the, uh, the scan the QR code, um, I've actually prepared it um, very, very early. OK, so this is the referral code. Um, I'll give you guys five seconds to actually you know scan it if you have not done so um, but otherwise you can just quickly get your phone open the camera and scan okay so these are all the materials that um, i'm presenting now all right so um yeah like that one okay so in terms of attendance i'm going to showcase um, how do you prepare an attendance and um consecutively what i will do is uh, um um, showcase how do you actually 
utilize attendance. I mean, attendance is one feature, but how do you actually utilize it? Cannot see the slides. Um, what do you guys see? A blank? I guess yes. you, you have not shared the screen because we can't see anything. I am sharing my screen actually. Let me just try again. But we can't see. Let me just try it again. All right, the boleh nampak. Thank you. So, so are you saying that you can't see my screen from the? From the beginning when you give us a QR code. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I can see. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you for letting me know. So we have not seen all of this. Did you? Okay. I'm not going to start again. However, um, all the lecture slides, you can also download it here. Okay. If you scan this uh, QR code, you should be able to get all the notes and, and perhaps hopefully you can link on what we have, um, what I have mentioned, okay? And um, that's about half an hour or so, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do now is uh, basically moving into attendance and how do you set up attendance um, in your Spectrum, okay? So everybody hopefully uh, can log into Spectrum, your own Spectrum, and um, what I'm gonna choose now is this course because I have not taught this course previously and nobody has, um, and this is like a very new course. So it's blank, it's empty, and this is what um, you will see if you are having, uh, if you are teaching a new course. Right, so now we're going to look at attendance. Um, how do you actually prepare attendance as usual? Turn on editing. Okay, and then uh, whichever it is, um, you can, if you are trying to follow, okay, and um, uh, I'm, I'm moving too fast, please let me know, okay? Because, um, like, for example, if you can't see this button, then pretty much you need to click turn on editing first. Once it is on, then you should be able to see this um, at an activity or resource. Click on that, click on attendance. Um, you can just leave it as attendance um, and then don't have to change any of the settings and just click OK, save and display, then you will see your attendance um, link over here. Click on it, and this is the most crucial bit where you need to uh, prepare your sessions. So depending on uh, when your session is, you click on Add Session, and uh, for this particular course, the session is tomorrow at uh, 5.30, so I'm going to switch into 5.30, I'm going to just set the time until about 8.30. Okay, so this is my session for tomorrow. But instead of having to do um, manually one session at a time, you can just click on multiple session, repeat this session above, click on the date. So for this particular course, it's only on Tuesday uh, at 5.30. So in case, for example, you have um, a shorter uh, lecture time, just one hour, and then on multiple days, you can just click on those multiple days. And then what's important is, you leave it as repeat every one week and then repeat until is when you uh, switch into the end of the semester, which in case uh, is uh, that particular week, okay, um, between 19 to 25 June. So since my lecture is on Tuesday, I'm going to put in 20 of June, 23, okay, and this feature it's totally up to you. Um, in my case, I normally allow students to record their own attendance. So if you untick this one, what you need to do in each class is, you know, you still need to call up their names and making sure that um, if they are in the class, then you need to click on present or absent. In my case, I normally leave it as um, allow student or I normally tick it. Allow students to record their own attendance. Why? I'm going to showcase um, this feature after this. Okay, automatic marking. Um, it depends if you would like to do it, then be my guest. Um, like myself, I don't 
normally allow automatic marking because automatic marking says student will be automatically marked depending on their first access to the course. So say, for example, this week um, you have uh, on this week, your lecture is on Tuesday. If the student has entered the course on Monday, then the system will automatically says that the student is present even though um, he or she did not attend your lecture tomorrow. Okay, so this feature is very useful for uh, once we have, once perhaps you are developing ODL SIM course where um, there's no really a face-to-face -face or a synchronous um, teaching with the students because ODL is online distance learning and SIM is self-instructional material. So it is a self-learning uh, procedure for the students, but nonetheless, you can actually look at whether the student have looked at the materials that you have prepared or not by um, switching automatic marking to set. Or yes, or set at the end of the session. Okay, but in my case, I'm just going to leave it as disabled because I want my students to um, scan their attendance during my session. Okay, so if you click on add, and this is what you'll see, okay, because I've repeated all the um, timing. Everything is on Tuesdays every single week between 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. Okay, so these are all the attendance lists. However, as you probably have known, our first cycle uh, of the semester is week one to week seven. And then we're going to have a mid-semester break um, during this particular week and then continue until the end of the semester. Therefore, what I would do is I will just delete this session so that my attendance is only on the 14th week of the um, teaching session. OK, so this is done. Um, this is basically how you prepare your attendance. Um, and what else you can do is. Um, you have an option okay, to ask your students um, during your session to open the spectrum, click on this attendance. Um, let me switch my role to students. OK, so, so this is what my student will see. So you can ask them to click on the attendance and then during the session, because you can see now um, nothing can be done, right? But um, during the session itself, there will be a link where the student can click uh, or, or, or self enroll themselves as attend. OK, so you can't see now because the session is tomorrow, but nonetheless, the student will be able to do it themselves. And you can see here the session is only open during the session time that you set, which is 5.30 to 8.30 in this case. OK, um, so the first option is for the students to actually go to this specifically on this page and click on attend. Or the second option is where you can. Oops, oh, I need to go back to my role. OK, so where you can. Um, editing, you can add in a block. So this is actually um, the second bit. So that is the attendance live session. And then next one is block HTML. So I'm just going to combine those two together. OK, so. Um, in preparing the block, why is it of advantage is um, you have prepared the attendance just now, right? So if you scroll on at the block on the bottom left, or bottom left, you click on at the block, and then um, when you scroll over here, you can see a QR code for attendance. You click on that, and what you see now is a QR code for the attendance specifically. Or this is not for today, okay? But based on the attendance that we have prepared just now. So um, to change it to tomorrow's session, I'm going to click on configure QR code attendance block and then change the date into 14th of March, which is tomorrow. OK, so now the student or, or you can take this QR code, put it in your lecture slides, or you can just ask your students to actually scan this. OK, so the advantage of this is um, if, uh, well, in promoting on usage of um, UM Touch, right? So if the student has their own UM Touch and has logged in using their own account, what they can do is actually, you know, as what we did previously, you can just click on the scan button, okay? Um, open camera and what you do is you just go and scan the QR code and the system will automatically put 
or uh, register, register the student as attend. Okay, so it is a very seamless feature where the student doesn't need to, you know, log in into Spectrum. And if our network is a bit slow, student needs to wait until the Spectrum page uh, opens and then log in, in and then do this and then click this and click that before they can actually click on, uh, click on attend. Okay, so if you would like to use this feature, be my guest. I think it's very useful. I have used this for the past two semesters and um, it's, it's very easy. But uh, just to take note that make sure the student um, downloaded UM Touch and then uh, have logged in using the Asiswa um, account on UM Touch. Okay, so these are the two features. And then you can just prepare this QR code and the student can just scan this on that particular section based on on the date, based on the time frame that you uh, have set up, then the system will automatically um, mark the student as attend. Okay, so it's, it's actually a very neat feature. All right. Um, gonna... Okay, so basically that's about it for blocks and HTML. If you are, um, if you would like to use the QR session um, link QR. Okay. However, there are other things that you can do with this HTML block. Okay, uh, with this block. So, say for example, um, I'm gonna add a block again. Say, say for example, um, in my practice, what I would do is uh, before the start of the semester, I normally set up a WhatsApp group. Okay. Um, yes, some of you guys, uh, I understand. Some of you guys might say, you know, you just wanna. Um, you don't want your students to know your number so that they don't they will not disturb you uh, at night but um, you know uh, everyone to their own uh, uh, planning but in case if you would like to uh, create a whatsapp group or in my case i've already created a whatsapp group and um, um, you would like to ask your students to actually enter the whatsapp group okay and uh, you can either email all the students right you do have a feature um, if you use this announcement feature, for example, you will blast an email to all your students inside your course. Um, and then inside there, you can say, please join my WhatsApp, blah, 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 this and that. But, um, you know, students, um, most of them will not open the SSO mail. Okay. But they will definitely open the Spectrum. Why? Because Spectrum is the get go learning management system. Uh, everybody knows they will open Spectrum um, to try and find your yeah, lecture notes, okay? So at the same time, what you can do is you can create a HTML block, okay? Now the HTML block is over down here, it's just a new HTML block. Um, as usual, click on the gear button and then configure or edit. You can uh, now rename it into say, for example, WhatsApp group, okay? Uh, my practice is to have it something like that. Okay, WhatsApp group, and then put the section and a semester. And then the content over here is where um, you can just add in anything. Okay, so say for example, um, I have a WhatsApp group. Let me see. Oh, yeah, I have a WhatsApp uh, a link over here. So I can just copy and paste. So this is the WhatsApp group that I have prepared for my other course. Okay, I can just put it there and then click on save. And what the student will see is basically a link saying that this is WhatsApp group and you just scan it. So um, by having by, by doing this for the past two semesters, I do not need to tell the students uh, join the WhatsApp group. We have WhatsApp group here and there. You can find here and there. We just leave it here on Spectrum page and the stu your student will automatically use their own device and, and um, enroll themselves in that particular group. Okay, so this is what uh, one practice that you can do um, if you are using WhatsApp group. But nonetheless, if you would like to put in any websites or any links, you can always use this feature as well. Okay, so say for example, um, learning or put it other learning materials. Okay, and then Say, for example, your other learning materials is based on a website that you have developed outside. So you can just put your link um, to the website here. Okay. Um, so this is just an example. Okay. 
and um, the student will be able to see the link. Okay, of course, you can do a hyperlink here and whatnot, but this is just uh, an example. At the same time, you can also provide a URL page over here where the student can just click on it. But nonetheless, it depends on what are your other learning ma teaching materials. Then to the end of the day, your Spectrum page might be overloaded with a lot of information and your student might have missed the link. But if you provide a, a block uh, with HTML on the right hand side, then it will always be there and the student can really, you know, notice it. So that is uh, my practice um, and um, just to show to everybody. So this is what I normally have. So this is my basic settings where I always have a WhatsApp group on the right hand side and also the QR code attendance. Okay, so these are the basics. Of course, you can do multiple things. Um, yeah, this WhatsApp group was not set up because I am not the coordinator. So uh, I don't have access to the QR code, but nonetheless, normally is there and um, um, you can see all the uh, teaching materials. So, okay, um, by the way, so this is the blended status that I mentioned at the very beginning. Um, this, uh, please, by, by all means, help us, help me, help university to actually uh, make sure that your course status is blended, okay? If you see, for example, uh, it says there, status on activity is X, and you have no idea how to add in to make sure that it's a tick, you can just go back to activities, um, just hover your, your mouse on the word activity and you can see all of these um, activity or resource. Um, if you add it in, then your um, counter over here will increase. OK, so once it's increased, um, say it says here three and now I have three, then it will be under blended status. Why this is important? Because um, the university needs to report to the um, um, KPT annually on the status of our courses. So, so far last semester, we only managed to get 56% of our courses as blended status. Okay. Um, so we are way behind all the other universities, um, especially between the five RUs, we are at number five. Even though world ranking, we can be proud of that we are number one. But um, when we are talking about policies of the government and whatnot, we are very, way lacking. So please um, help yourself. Do it. Let your friends know um, to help universities because to another day, it's a very simple thing. You just do it once. Um, and then if you were to teach the course again in the next coming semester, um, all your materials will be there automatically and your status will automatically be blended. OK, so it helps. Um, us a little bit in reporting to the um, ministry. So what you sharing is fabulous, but uh, can you go slower? The similar block. Thank you. Okay. Um, no worries. So um, are you trying to follow, or are you trying to do it as we are going, or, or um, just to go a bit slower? <laughs> Okay. So the reason why I want to go like quite quick um, is because this session is also recorded and um, you know our attention span in, in um, looking at our monitors and doing it is about 15 to um, about 15 minutes or so. So I'm just going to try and push as much as possible and prepare this um, as, as a short uh, videos uh, by edit where if say for example you want to use this feature again I will just put a short segment um, on this particular feature on edit website you can just click on it and then you can view what you want to view okay all right so um, but unless it is recorded we will share it with everybody um, if you would like to use it okay what else I want to say about this feature I think that's about it Okay, all right, let's move back to, so we have covered about block and HTML. So um, there are many other features that is um, not shown, at least for today. Okay, because uh, this is just intermediate. So I'm just showcasing on how I'm actually using it. There are some other advanced feature that I'm kind of like, um, you know, having try and get go, but it's not something that I utilize um, very, very frequently. Like, for example, if you look at here, I put in introduction to course, but 
nothing is there, right? Uh, but I uh, put it here, click to show. So if you actually click on this, it will be a, uh, a kind of like a, a menu or, or, or text will pop up. And this feature is not embedded in Spectrum, but rather it's more an advanced feature where you need to play with HTML code to actually um, allow this um, click to show feature. Okay, wait, it's not there. Um, why I try and find this information? Because I think it's, it's a bit lengthy um, for students and for me. So I'm kind of like, you know, decided to try and find if uh, we can actually do this. And and yes, um, you, can, you can just leave it as it is. If your students are interested, they will just click on it, read it. Um, otherwise, you know, most of the time it will be closed and your course will be a bit more compact. Okay, just to showcase on this very, very quickly. So this is what my student will see. Okay, now it becomes short. Um, I'm trying to try and, and, and squeeze this up a little bit because uh, the supplementary content is a bit longer. Uh, but this is what the student will see. Introduction to course, click to show. And once they click it, then they will see all of this. So if you are, if you are you know, keen on learning this, um, basically you can do a lot of HTML coding into um, our course or in our spectrum as well. We, if we have taught a course previously, do we need to delete the past attendance link to create a new one? Yes. Unfortunately, what Spectrum is doing is like, you know, duplicating what you have done previously. Um, but don't worry, you can just delete all the attendance um, because what we also have is, if you have noticed, there's an archive over here. And um, what all the attendance of the student list, all the things that you have done in the previous semester is now being archived. So don't worry about deleting your past attendance. If it's there, okay, just delete it. It will not affect your attendance uh, from the previous semesters at all. It will still be there, okay? So uh, similarly, um, say for example, um, you have two cycles between lecturers, right? So this semester you'll be teaching, next semester someone else will be teaching, and then the following semester you'll be teaching again. So um, sometimes the organization is a bit different, you don't like it, you like the, your style. So don't worry, you can just delete everything on that particular course because everything is back on um, uh, archive. And this is why, one of the reasons why I'm gonna go into backup and restore, okay? So this backup and restore function is very important if you want to delete um, your, your course to make sure that either you start from scratch or as, as I mentioned, if you are teaching the course alternatively with uh, a different colleague per semester, then you want to make sure that, you know, during your session is always the same, during your partner session is always the same. So it depends on how you want to set it up. So we're going to look at um, backup and restore now. So basically what you are doing is you are duplicating what you have um, done previously or your style of uh, blended learning in Spectrum and then you're going to paste it on either the current session or the um, sessions in the future. So why do I cover about this and why you do not have you do not have to worry anymore is, as I mentioned at the very beginning, where Spectrum actually um, in sync with Maya, right? So one of the issues previously was that if you did a backup and restore, Spectrum will restore your previous student's name. So there might be some confusion there. Um, there could be some issues. Okay, But now, since Maya and Spectrum um, are in sync, so you do not have to worry about your student's uh, name list um, as long as you do not restore um, just before your lecture, meaning that, say, for example, if my lecture at 3 p.m. today, I'm restoring it now, okay, then I will have, uh, my students will have trouble assessing Spectrum on that particular session. But say, for example, if you only do or you prepare everything either during weekends or perhaps you don't have any lecture this week, but you have a lecture next week, so you can do your backup and restore um, in the weekends, during the weekends, uh, so that it will not affect anyone, pretty much, okay? Um, all right, so how do you backup and restore? Let me go back to my course that doesn't have anything. Okay, so I've prepared a little bit of attendance, QR, and um, the HTML uh, block to put in QR codes or attendance and or whatever. Okay, 
um, to do this backup and restore is first you go to your page again turn on editing um, and then go to more is it more under the other one um, okay not under here oh yeah it is here okay so under course administration over here you can see these two words backup and restore okay so if you click on backup so these are all the contents that you can backup so basically i um, mean it's, it's almost a hundred percent backing up based on what you have done um, but these are all the basics so uh, this and that um, is not critical for the backup it will not affect anything so thus it is uh, untick uh, as default okay and um, in terms of your enroll students you can also untick that one especially if your backup is meant for um, the following cycle not your current cycle not this semester but for next semester or, or the semesters uh, in the future okay so you can untick that one um, and I highly encourage if you would like to do a backup and restore, you just untick the enrolled students. Uh, why? Because if you tick on that, you can actually see there's more blue tick underneath here. But if you untick that one, you can see now that one becomes gray, gray, gray. Okay. And why are these important? Because towards the other day, when you do a backup and restore, you want your file to be as small as possible. If the file is big, then the restoring process takes time okay so um and if say for example because you can see here include comments so if you um in, in your process of teaching and learning you use a lot of uh, forum feature where there's a lot of comments there's a lot of communication um, and um, you click on include enroll students so spectrum will save every single communication so that's why the file will be like very huge um, as an example, um, as for one of my courses, um, SID 2004, if I were to back up, back it up using um, include enroll uh, users, the file would be half a gigabyte. But if I untick this one, just um, include activity resources, meaning that lecture notes are all there, um, basic blocks for activities are all there, um, the file switch from half a gigabyte into just 60 megabytes. So it's a very very small file and uh, restoring process will be like very very quick you don't you do not have to wait for a long time before you can actually enter the course again and do whatever you want to do okay so this is my course i'll just um because the course has nothing as you can see it's empty i'm just gonna uh back it up okay so you just leave everything as it is and you can either press next one by one where it asks specifically what do you want to save okay so these are part of the feature um you can click on next um okay before i move to the next one so this makeup is important say for example if you have three lecturers um and then um say you are the main one and you are always there teaching this course however your two other partners um are alternating so which means this semester is you and this one and then next semester you and the other one and then the following semester you and this one again then perhaps say for example if this is you this is lecture number one this is lecture number two you might you know just untick lecture number two because you just want to restore the specific lecturers okay so these are some of the features that you can have a look um and and of course specifically choose what you want to back up okay and then lastly when you click on perform backup uh, you can see quickly there's this um what do you call it um, a bar showcasing the uh, progress bar okay once everything is done it says the backup file was successfully created so you click on continue and it will automatically move to the restore page so previously it was on uh, backup page now it moved automatically to restore page okay and what you also notice over here is course backup area and user private um backup area okay and um why is my course not here oh um so unfortunately it doesn't follow the naming system previously the naming system has codes inside there um i'm not sure why it's always there okay 
So you can identify your backup based on the cost uh, and based on the date by which you did your backup. So in this case, I can see Monday 13th of March at about 10 p.m. And the size is very small because I don't have anything. OK, so from here, you can either download, save the backup file um, onto your own computer or you can just click on restore. And then what will happen is basically it gives out all the details about the restoring process um, and the, the information on the backup files that you've chosen previously. And um, OK, section activities, blah, 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 all the informations. And um, if you just click on um, continue, uh, restore as a new course. Oh, no. Um, you can. Oh, this is new. I haven't seen this before. Oh, just restore as a new course because this is, in fact, a new course. OK. Um, unless if you're working under UMC set, then you can click on that. But otherwise, you can just leave it as it is. OK, merge backup course into this, delete content, of course, then restore. So it's up to you. Um, if you want to you know, start from scratch, you can just delete contents of this course and then restore. But if you choose this one, please bear in mind that it will delete everything, including um, the student list. OK, so if you cho chose this, delete the content of this course and then restore, uh, please do it uh, either during weekends or at night. Don't do it during the day. Because if your student wants to check in any, um, you know, search for if there's any new posts by you or, or your colleagues, then suddenly the student will be kicked out from the system, especially for this course. So uh, avoid choosing this. Um, if you will, you, you can still restore and backup. It's fine, but uh, make sure um, the time is right. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to leave that one. Uh, merge the backup. A course into existing course, delete contents again. Um, if you do have existing course that you want to override, then you can just click on it. Um, in, in my case, um, it's not, so I'm just gonna leave it. Um, when results enter specific search, oh. why it won't work? Let me see. So this is a new feature that I have not seen previously. Or well, perhaps I'll just search for my course. Okay. Oh. It's not there. Mm. Now this is odd. I'm not sure why it's not um, showcasing. Foundation of Science, Mathematics, Medicinal, Faculty of Science. OK, so this is new. Uh, perhaps this is because of Maya. Previously, when I did this, it was not as complex as this when you try to restore. Oh, I need to select everything again. Anyhow, um, you should be able to, to do it um, because oh, this one science just now. Oh, it's you can pick it up there. Science and then continue. OK, there you go. Or you can choose your course and then continue. So I didn't notice the continue button. OK, so include number of methods. Um, no, because this should be automatically pulled from Maya. OK, so include permission override, uh, this and that, include blocks. So say, for example, you have uh, prepared blocks for WhatsApp group, prepared block for attendance. So everything will be as it is. Okay? So regardless of, say, for example, um, your, your clicks have deleted everything, but you want it to be there, then you can include it back. Okay? Um, include filters. If you are using filters, then you can include it. In my case, I have not used filters. Um, include planned events. Again, uh, I think most of us are not using planned events, but if you are the type that uses this, then be my guest. Um, groups and groupings, um, it's important, especially if, say, for example, you know that every semester you will have a huge number of students and you normally ask them to do a group work, then include your group and grouping so that you don't have to recreate all the groupings again. Okay, 
competencies um if say you are using attendance feature and whatnot so uh, not attendance sorry quiz and assignment feature it will be there um, of course it will be blank but nonetheless it will be there um, custom fields if you are done anything content blank uh, content bank content so this is if you are the ones that um, use a spectrum to the full capacity where you have your own question bank then you can include that one in as well and include legacy course files so in case if there's any old course files that you want to include in then you can include it there okay so in my case i think this one is just to showcasing um what will happen okay so we're just gonna go next um, again summarizing everything before um it will be restored Okay, general history. So these are all again the feature uh, in general user and no. Okay, so you will you should not override my um, students. Then you can just click on restore. Then you will say restore, continue, and voila, you will be the same. And the only difference is the, the name is different now. Um, copy. Okay, do I still have the old ones? Yes, because I selected a new course. Okay. But otherwise, um, mm -hmm. everything else should be also empty. Okay, so nobody is here. Um, but again, I think after midnight, this particular course will be deleted by Maya because it's not registered anywhere. But nonetheless, this is how um, the process of restoring your course. Okay, so my course is still over here. All right. Okay, so that's about it for uh, backup and restore. Now I'm going to move back um, to um, H5P, but this time around it's very, very quick. I'm not going to cover that a lot. Um, basically, H5P is a HTML5 package. Um, so if you have heard about HTML, HTML is um, one of the languages used on websites. Okay, So HTML5 package is where they are using HTML5, uh, HTML5 is HTML version 5, where there can be communications between you as the user and the system itself. So previously, um, if you uh, look at the previous old generation HTML, it's basically where you give in uh, input and then it will display something. So that's the basic knowledge of HTML. So it can be simply as simple as um, um, one website, okay. Um, even our our UM website is not HTML5, but nonetheless it can adapt to HTML5. Okay, but not, um, HTML5 is when there's interaction during the display. Uh, so that's that's to sum it up. Okay, so it is where you can create an interactive content without the need of programming skills. Uh, so say for example, if you are taking a video. Okay, from YouTube. Uh, why do you want to take it? Because it, it's, uh, you know, video can be very good. So you, you want to take it up and put it as part of your le uh, learning materials in your lecture, which is fine. Um, but the video might be, you know, half an hour long. And um, as we have seen, uh, and, and there are research on that actually, um, saying that um, below the age of 19, years old, um, the attention span, looking at screen, uh, learning online, particularly just screen without any interaction, is about 10 to 12 minutes only. So this is where HTML5 comes in, where you can put in elements of interaction, um, say at every 10 minutes. So every 10 minutes, a question will pop up and the user or the students will need to do something okay, to interact with the content before they can continue looking at or viewing um, the other contents. Okay, so um, if, especially if you're doing um, a, a pre-recorded lecture, for example, and then your lecture is 45 minutes long. Okay, um, so instead of just, you know, just giving the students um, the lecture notes or the recorded lecture notes and ask them to view for the five minutes or worth of lecture, you can actually put in uh, questions every 50 minutes or put in some uh, feedback uh, forms or, or notes or something that the students need to do 
and to interact with the video content before they can actually continue. So H5P um, is embedded in Spectrum. So is a, is a, it is a very, very useful feature, especially if you're using a pre-recorded lecture. Uh, in my case, I don't because I no longer use pre-recorded so far. Uh, I'll probably use it again in the future, but so far I have not used it. I've used it once in, in one semester during our MCO, but um, after that, because we switched to face-to-face, -to -face, so I no longer um, use H5P, but nonetheless, you can use it. So um, if you have used um, Edpuzzle previously, okay, H5P actually doing exactly the same as what H uh, Edpuzzle can do, but H5P is a bit more detailed compared to Edpuzzle. If you want something which is very, very quick, um, then, you know, add puzzle is, is a great advantage. However, if you are the type that, you know, you, you want to do a bit more detail, then you can use H5P module in Spectrum. And um, the advantage of using H5P in Spectrum is that if, say, for example, you have, uh, again, 45 minute lecture, and then at 15 minutes, you want to post a question to your students. Okay, you want to ask based on the first 15 minutes, perhaps if you are talking about uh, Spectrum, um, if I were to have this as a recorded lecture for you guys to view, I might put in at 15 minutes, I'm going to ask you questions. Um, how many platform does, uh, how many LMS platform does UM have? Okay, so I put in uh, option A, B, C, D for um, uh, MCQ type or short answer. Okay, so I put A1, B2, um, C3, D4, E5, for example, and then um, you need to answer that particular question before you can continue watching the video. Okay, and say for example, if you chose one, um, me as a lecturer, as the one that prepared the question for you, you can actually see how the student progresses. So if majority of them got it right, then you can see most of them got it right. If most of them got it wrong, you can also see uh, most of them got it wrong. And perhaps by, by analyzing the H5P answers, you can improve the, the learning um, uh, concepts of the student in the following lecture. Okay, So it's, it's very useful, especially uh, for those who like to do um, uh, pre-recorded lecture uh, or, or use materials from outside. So my suggestion is to use this to include this as in, in part of your Spectrum course so that your student can actually uh, learn better. OK, so um, and, and finally, it is uh, learning plus practice or tutorial in one. So you just prepare one, but everything will be embedded in that particular video. So I'm not going to showcase H5P because it is very, very lengthy. Last time, just talking about H5P took me about one and a half hours. So what you can do is you can scan this QR code, two QR codes. So the first one is where you can download all the notes based on H5P. Okay. And second one is looking at the recorded um, um, ways by which how you can prepare H5P. So a live session uh, was recorded previously. So I'm just going to put it there. If you would like to use H5P, um, scan the QR code and see how do um, you uh, can prepare H5P materials for your course. Okay, and finally, looking at others, um, this is where um, I'm going to sum up a little bit on what have been covered previously okay, in Spectrum Basic. So you have three components. You have assignment, turn it in, and quiz. Um, turn it in now um, is no longer under Spectrum 100%. It is linked to Spectrum, but we are not responsible for turning in. All the registration process and whatnot goes back to the UAM library. So if you have not used it in and you would like to request an account, you just um, request uh, an account from the library. OK, but um, nonetheless, before I'm going to showcase all these three feature assignment training and quiz, um, I'm just going to highlight that um, all the webinar series that we have done starting from 2020 to 2022 is actually on edX website. So if, if you um, QR scan this, then you should be able to see like a long list of uh, materials and um, you can just have watch all of them if you would like to or some of them depending on what you need. OK, all right. Um, so going to cover all these three um, a quick way on how do you prepare assignment um, training and quiz. 
So moving back to your um, page. So I'll just showcase studying in first because studying is very, very quick to prepare. If you click on, um, what was it again? Activity or resource over here, you will see a turn in assignment link um, down at the bottom right. You can just click on that. You can see this is H5P that I mentioned previously. Okay, but anyhow, um, turn it in. Click on that. Why is it not working? Let me see. Why is it not working? Could be something wrong with the assignment. Hmm. It's not working, so I cannot showcase it to you guys for today. H5P works. So we have some problem with turning in, I guess. So I will report this to PTM and have them uh, look at what happened. Oh, it's working now. Okay, so um, turning in, so you can just name um, assignment one, for example, submission link, um, submission true, um, turn it in. Okay, you can display it. Um, submission type, any type, number of parts. So say for example, if you um, the assignment has two parts, so one is draft, one is final submission, you can just put two, or if it has four drafts and then five, or perhaps if you would like your students to um, separate them into five different modules. So say for example, number one is just introduction, number two is, is um, research, discussion, um, conclusion and I don't know references. If you would like to do that, then be my guest. Um, even though it doesn't make sense, but then that, nonetheless, you can. Uh, the option is there. File size. Um, you can just put it a maximum limit, just twenty. Um, allow submission type no, because uh, you want to make sure that the file is easily accessible to you as well. Okay, so uh, please put in no. Um, um, otherwise, your student might you know, submit a text file, for example, instead of a Word document or PDF as what you wanted. Display similarity reports to students. Um, I normally put yes, so that the student will know that if they do a copy and pasting, then they will actually have a very, very high similarity reports. However, um, the new emergence of ChatGPT, for example, um, is, is, is very, very um, challenging, so to say. Okay, because uh, if your student completed your assignment, written assignment, especially um, using chatbots, um, either ChatGPT or they develop their own um, um, chat modules, um, they can actually, because it's an open AI, you can actually do that if you would like to. Um, and so it will be a bit difficult for you to, you know, catch them because um, you cannot use it uh, using turning in because so far, Turnitin is in the progress of identify AI content, uh, AI created contents, but uh, as far as I know, they have not uh, released that particular update yet. But uh, if you have seen um, um, two of the posters that I that released um, last month and this month, okay, so there are some AI uh, tools that can be used to detect AI. So if you, uh, in your practice, you normally give your students uh, a written assignment, um, you can use turn it in, it's fine, but my suggestion is to also use uh, another tool, AI created tools or AI detection tools, so that you can make sure that your students did not use AI to create, uh, to develop, you know, to answer all the assignments, okay? Great display, um, it doesn't matter. It depends on whether you actually mark it in, in the system or you have your a different marking uh, system outside of turning in. Um, and auto refresh grade, just leave it yes um, to refresh similarity reports or you can know if you would like to um, manually do it. Now, um, in my case, my own practice is normally, uh, I'm just looking at whether the students copy and paste it from somewhere else. I have my own grade system. I do not use the ones in uh, um, Spectrum. Um, not that it's not good or anything. It's just that I normally mark using my iPad. 
so it will be easier for me to have a different setup um, once I have marked their assignments. So that's my practice, but nonetheless, it's up to you on how you want to mark it. Okay, so you can just name it part one, for example, start date, end date, and post date. So um, normally, end date, uh, due date, and post date is similar. Um, the post date is, um, so due date is when the students need to finish up the assignment. Post date, it depends on um, whether, um, I can't really see this system specifically in Spectrum, but I do know there are some system where post date is when once it reaches the post date, then they will post the um, either the grades or the similarity reports. Okay, so but in this case, um, it depends on what you want to use it for. In my case, I normally just put it due date and post date as a similar date and time. Okay, similarity report options. Um, so it depends on whether so say for example the students submitted on their last day on the twentieth at uh, 8 a.m. for example, okay, and then suddenly they were shocked to see that they, they were 90% similar to reports. Um, the marks is, uh, the, the mark is uh, 90, not the marks. The similarity report says it's 90% copied from somewhere else. So it's up to you whether you want to uh, allow the students to resubmit after they have done their corrections or not. It's up to you. But the university policy clearly says that you have the right to block your students, uh, to give them zero, or even uh, if you would like to, you can just report to integrity unit and the student can be barred from the course or the program or whatever, okay? So it, it's all up to you. Uh, I'm just telling you the options um, that you have uh, because it is your right, okay? Report generated speed, generated report immediately. So again, um, it depends on how do you want to play with the settings. You can just have a look. If you don't understand anything, there's always a question mark here where you can just click and um, it will showcase what are these uh, means okay um, small matches this is something that i normally do normally i put in one percent um, meaning that if the student you know sometimes it's very difficult for you to get um, zero percent similarity reports regardless of whether you you write it on your own whether you view it from somewhere there's always at least a small percentage of similar content. Okay, so I this is my practice. I normally put in about 1% um, so that um, if, say, the sentence, uh, especially in the science field, um, if I were to teach an instrument, for example, called as high performance liquid chromatography, okay, so sometimes the turn in system will highlight um, high performance liquid chromatography as. Um, as a percentage of similarity, even though that is actually a name for an instrument. Okay, so put it 1% or 2% actually helps me to clear out all the jargons in science and really focus on the content itself and whether the student have copied and pasted from anywhere else. Um, great my options, if you have a rubric, you can put it in. If you um, like myself, I normally put a rubric outside um, of the turning in platform, I'll just put it in Spectrum so that a student can access it rather easily rather than um, inside the turning in platform. And everything else is pretty much um, basic. Okay, so you press save and return course. Then ooh, I think Spectrum is lagging because um, they starting having lecture. Okay, so there you go. So now you will see um, assignment one. Submission through turning in. Okay, so if you click on that, then now again it's blank. Okay, this is where you need to uh, click. Um, oh, where? No, it's already there. Okay, so this is where the students, because you are not a student, the student can actually click on this and then they can submit their assignment. Okay, and then after that, what you will see underneath here is you will see the name of your students. So fortunately for me, for this particular course, I only have one student. So if you have 100 students, then you can actually see the submission title, their dates um, submitted, and the most importantly, looking at the similarity report, okay, the similarity percentage. And um, over here is some buttons where you can actually download their submission um, or upload submission for them. So say, for example, uh, previously, I had student who had 100% similarity. Okay, 
hundred percent. It's not ninety nine. It's a hundred percent. And when I look at the document, it is a copy and paste from the the first paragraph until the end, the last paragraph, in a ten page uh, document. So um, uh, after confronting to the student, the student told me that um, she actually uh, copy and paste. Um, uh, initially, she she said that she write it on their own, but uh, you know, turn it in prove that it's not. So um, I keep on asking the student multiple times, uh, even to the point asking them, asking um, that person, can you show me the draft of your writing? And towards the other day, she um, told me that she copied and pasted it, put it into an AI tool for paraphrasing, and then submit that as an assignment. So these are some of the things that I have accounted. I'm sure either you have accounted the same thing or you have not noticed that your students actually did that. Okay, so now because of Jet GPT, the issue will become more um, common. So please, as lecture, we need to kind of like look at the technologies as well uh, and do something so that we can, you know, avoid or your students from, from cheating um, in not just the final exam, in all your assignments. Okay, so um, there are multiple tools out, out there that we can um, have a look, uh, perhaps not in this session, but in the future session. But nonetheless, if uh, I've asked the students to rewrite and she have rewritten, I asked her to send the copy to me instead of allowing her to resubmit on her own. Okay, so she sent me a copy and then to overwrite the copy. So there's this button, submit. Paper, yeah. So in case the student, um, this student Shamimi has submitted once, and then um, the similarity report says ninety, I go back, went back to the student, um, asked the student to rewrite. She's rewritten, sent it a copy to me, and I want to overwrite the similarity report. Okay, so you click on this button. Okay, so click on this button, and then you can upload your files. Um, and what it will do is you will just um, overwrite. Um, symmetry report based on the new submission and the old submission will be deleted. Okay, and the other three, I can't remember what these are, but um, the ones that I've used uh, a lot is the download button and the upload button. So the download button is important uh, because this is my only platform where the student need to submit their assignment. So they don't have to submit in two different platforms. They just submit it into TurnIn. You can download it, save it, and then I normally mark the assignment using my iPad, my tablet. Okay. Um, so far, there's no more question. Should I thought of course previously? Okay, to that one I've covered that. All right. So I think that's about it for turning in. Okay. Um, embedded in Spectrum, but nonetheless, you can actually have access to um, turningin.com. Let me just showcase this to you. Um, if say, um, well, if you have normally you, you will not have access to turn it in online platform. Okay. Um, but if you would like to have access on, um, this online platform, what you can do is you can talk to the library so that the library can create an account for you. Okay. And then once the, the account have created, then you can see here spectrum and you see Malaya. So spectrum over here is this course. The course that I have just uh, that I have just created, so everything that that we created um, under our uh, spectrum, if you are using TurnItIn, will also be made available online, okay, at TurnItIn.com, and but the advantage of this is when you can create a a, a dummy class, um, so say for example, if you would like to publish a, a manuscript, right, and um, you want to see the similarity reports or Perhaps you want to see the symmetry reports because your PhD students or your master's students are the one who've written majority of the um, the manuscript. So you just want to make sure that you know at least it's not fifty percent similar similar um, to a different content. So you want to make sure that it is yours um, because of code of ethics and whatnot. But uh, yeah, you you can create a course and um, submit it to here. Okay. And, and um, my practice is also, so number one is I normally use this turn in platform for all the manuscripts that I want to submit. The um, second one is, say for example, I will, uh, I'll be a thesis reviewer 
or Kinesia Defense um, uh, panels, um, all the documents, um, because we know that it will not be, uh, the student themselves do not need to sum submit through Turnitin, I will do the due diligence to submit it um, on behalf of them, looking at what would be the similarity reports, because towards the end of the day, um, you want to have a good quality students when they graduated. So um, Turnitin is one of the platform that you can use. Even though now, you know, chat GPT is kind of like um, disturbing all the uh, dynamics, uh, but you know, nonetheless, it's still useful for now. Okay, um, so that's about it for turning in. Um, assignment and quiz are again a bit lengthy, uh, but nonetheless, um, EdEx has actually written um, or stepwise on how to actually prepare spectrum for quiz, for summative assessment, um, setting up and, and there's, there's a lot of time actually spent on re, uh, writing about this. So uh, you can actually um, go to edec blog or edecqm08.wordpress.com. Uh, okay, so this is where you can find a lot of um, other information on how do you actually prepare this and that. Because to um, do it again um, one by one, it will be the same as what you are doing what what you are reading now so either you are listening to what i'm saying and then do it at the same time or you you're just listening as a background and in the future you're gonna try it again so might as well I'm just giving you this is there we have prepared about uh, we have prepared um, the materials for you to actually um, use it and uh, hopefully it will be um, useful okay um I think that's all from me. If you would like to ask any questions, you can just send an email to hadifuad at um.edu.my or you can just send the question to edec and um, if it's related to um, e-learning, I'll be answering it. Uh, if it's related to trainings or perhaps um, you at the department or faculty would like to invite us to do some trainings specifically for any of the spectrum components or different types of training, um, then we will do our best to um, serve and entertain you. Okay, I think that's all for today. Any questions before I stop the session? Anything? If there's none, um, then um, I think that's all from me. Thank you and um, happy teaching for um, the next um, 15 weeks. All right, thank you everybody.